Conversation with Ron McLean. Welcome once again to In Conversation, Conquer COVID-19. These are lovely t-shirts that all of our Sportsnet crew on our various platforms are sporting going into the weekend. So welcome to the show. Today we have Mitchell Marner and Natalie Spooner. And if I was to think about Friday, does anybody know what day it is? It's Friday. And the spirit of Friday was always TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, a day that's designed to be about fun. And that's exactly what I think of when I think of Natalie Spooner and Mitch Marner. Ask any hockey player and they'll say, Marner, that imagination, that skill, how in the world does he see those plays in real time? And it's the same with Natalie Spooner. And I should add, it's not like they don't sacrifice or have great courage to their game. I'll talk about some pivotal shot blocks for each of them. But Spooner, she went from the Clarkson Cup and Olympic gold to CTV's Amazing Race, CBC's Battle of the Blades, which is courage in and of itself. And it's fun. Uh, her gold medal in 2014 in Sochi, Natalie's coach was Kevin Deneen, whose father, Bill, was a great hockey player, fought for players' rights in the union, and was a legendary hockey coach. And he used to say, sure, it's just a game, but it's because you work so hard at just a game that you enjoy it. Today, we're going to have fun with fundamentals. Natalie Spooner in alone! Scores! What a move here, and a beautiful goal! What a highlight reel goal for Natalie Spooner. Spooner and Jenner. Spooner in all alone. She scores! Kicks back up. Here's Mitch Marner. Waits, takes, scores! You're not going to see many goals like this. Spinorama backhand right on the tape. That is just absolutely ridiculous. Marner picks it up. Dropping the net. Marner to the goal. Score! There's Mitch in Etobicoke and Natalie's in Mississauga on her now famous blue couch. So for those who don't know, the blue couch has become a huge Monday deal. Natalie, tell me what you're up to during COVID-19. Well, just really trying anything to stay busy. Um, obviously, I'm not used to being home this much. But yeah, I've started a Monday live Instagram on my big blue quarantine couch where I've been hanging out a lot of the time. Um, but other than that, just doing some activities, getting my workouts in, really trying to pass the time. <laughs> It was great to see Andrew Poget, your partner on Battle of the Blades. Great to see Megan Mickelson. And you, uh, Mitch, uh, you're keeping pretty good company and you're doing actually a lot of neat stuff. So tell me some of the things that you've done here during COVID. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we started out with the uh, the letter to the kids, just letting them know that they're never alone in anything they're fighting. I mean, obviously right now is a tough time. A lot of people can't be with their friends or, or family that they want to be. And um, it's tough on everyone. So I just, that was the first thing we did is just making sure that people know they're never alone in anything they're fighting. And then um, our recent one is now, uh, now our recent one is getting, um, trying to get food and meals to the frontline workers that are in need of it and trying to get them right here. And, um, you know, we have the, the donations are going great so far and everything's surpassed what we thought so far. So we're just going to try and keep getting it higher and higher. As you can imagine, lots of uh, questions from Instagram and Twitter for you two. And I'll get to that note uh, you wrote. Uh, this is Alana underscore Harold on Instagram asking you, Mitch, was it you or your girlfriend who wrote the note? Because the penmanship is fantastic. What's the story? <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, so funny story. I wrote it. I wrote one. And then I sent the photo to um, Natasha, who is the one that runs kind of our whole charity and everything on the higher end. And, um, I said, this, this cannot be getting put out. It's just awful writing. And she goes, all right, let's see what Steph can do. So I, I got Steph to write it. And our goal was to Steph was like, all right, don't make it look that neat. And she wrote that. And that was supposed to be her not neat. And I was like, what, what's, how, do you, how is that possible? Like, what is that? And we were comparing the two. And it was just looking like a three-year-old writing to like a, a, a science like engineer that was writing like, something insane. I was like, all right, whatever. Like we're going to send theirs in obviously. And then everyone started commenting being like, this is not your hand. Right? You know what? All the guys on my team started texting being like, we're not stupid. And I, so I was like, I commented back to Max being like, of course it's not my hand. I, mean, I could do this and try to make sure everyone saw it. And people just kept commenting me like, it's not yours, it's not yours, it's not yours. But yeah, no, it, it ended up being hers. 
Well, I remember one time being in Port Hood, uh, Cape Breton Island, Al McKinnis, they renamed the rink and 2000 people were there and I signed autographs like you do. And uh, the lady said, nice job, Ron, but you hold a pen like a grade five, which was really bad. Hey, listen, one thing about back to fun in a minute, because I really associate both of you with uh, fun in the game, but courage. Uh, I also associate both of you with uh, courage in the game. And because all the frontline responders are, are it's like beyond human limits right now, things that people are being asked to do. Natalie, you first. Uh, you did. Did you break your jaw badly blocking a shot one time? What's the story there? I did. Um, oh, I would have been 17 at the time, and I would have just gone to my first senior team Canada camp. So I was ready and, and, and uh, going on all cylinders. But we ended up going to the Stony Creek tournament, and a defenseman was going to take a shot, and I went down to block it and just kind of dragged the puck, and I tried to get my face out of the way, but it got me under my cage. So, yeah, I broke my jaw. It wasn't too pleasant, but I'm sure that happens – to Mitch and those guys all the time. But for us, we don't really get too much in our face with our cages on. Well, before I bring in Mitch, because he's got a famous one from game three of the series last year against Boston, but you, you uh, your brothers, I've met your family. Uh, so you, to do Battle of the Blades, to do Amazing Race, I mean, that's gut check stuff. Uh, how are you so good at doing things that are like scary? I mean, I think I just kind of embrace it and just go with it. I think um, amazing race was really one that taught me just to go with the flow and I think as athletes we tend to be so structured um, and really have a plan for everything and and going on amazing race was really you had no clue what you're gonna do you're gonna wake up you travel this place um, you know try to accomplish these tasks that it wasn't just playing hockey or training so I think that that really taught me to go with the flow and then just moving forward in life I think you know I just try to take everything and, and run with it if I have an opportunity and Battle of the Blades was kind of bad. I didn't really know what to expect. I just dove headfirst in there and tried to do my best. And some points it wasn't pretty, but some points I, I think I kind of did okay. So, yeah. Oh, you did you did amazingly well. And it's funny, we actually compared you and uh, Mitch. Mitch, we showed you in the pregame warm-up where you do your little edge work stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you love I saw that. I bet you'd love to be a figure skater. Did you ever? Did you ever do it? Uh, no, I never actually did. Um, I, I was close. I mean, uh, growing up, the one rink I always went to in Ajax and Pickering, um, there was always a full pad of actual figure skaters. And um, on the other side of it, that's where I skated with my instructor, Robin Moe. And um, I always debated on trying to see if I could go out there and do it, but never ended up actually trying. Uh, Rob, I'd love to hear about his ideas on skating. I remember when you were in London and you went back home for a little stretch there, and he was saying, You're too standing up. You know, you got to get your power under you. Tell me what he taught you about uh, crossovers and all that stuff. What, what was your secret? Uh, I mean, he taught me everything, really. Um, you know, he always says that the, the thinking part was always me, but I don't know, it's still hard to think of it that way. I mean, I, I've been with him since I was four years old. So ever since, really, I've been competitive at hockey. I've, I've been skating with him in every summer. And um, I always try and get out there for once or twice a week or multiple weeks during the summer and, and get out with him and try not he just kind of brings me back down and, and shows me all the things that I kind of lost my touch over the, the year. And, um, obviously playing hockey is a little different than when you're doing summer skating and kind of just skills. You kind of lose some things that are very important and, and um, you know, things that he have taught me. So whenever I get back to him, there's always three things right off the bat that he, he immediately stops, stops me and, and figures out what I'm doing wrong. And whether it's my hands are too low, um, I'm slapping the puck around or anything like that. It's just quick things. And then, you know, kind of the rhythm just gets back from what me and him do. And, um, you know, he's been a big help to my career for sure. Don't let me forget to get back to your shot block in that Boston series. But Natalie, when you listen to that, uh, who's your guru and what are the things that you work on? Like, I know your footwork uh, in your workout on Monday, but what would you rely on? Yeah, I mean, I think I've had a lot of different skill coaches coming up and um, obviously skating too. Like skating was a big thing that I had to work on. I, I kind of skate like I swim. So I had... I'm not very efficient, so I had to work a lot on my skating and, and still do. But, I mean, skill-wise, there's, there's so many different people that we've got to work with over our time. And I think the nice thing about that is everyone kind of brings something different um, and you get to learn something new. Like this summer, we got to go to Daryl Belfry's camp um, where they had the men's camp first and then uh, the female camp. And that was just amazing um, to see, you know, what the guys were learning and then kind of get to learn the same things um, and kind of put it into our game. So um yeah there's been a lot of different skill coaches even through the national team program that we've got to work with um and just you know help help improve our skills okay the shot block 
game three, Boston, two shot blocks off Pasternak. What do you remember? Um, yeah, I remember, you know, that was a pretty big game for us. I remember it was 1-1 in the series, and we won game one. Obviously, they, they took game two, and um, I'm pretty sure game two was ugly for us. I'm pretty sure they, they kind of kicked it to us. Um, and uh, game three, obviously, coming back to our rink, it was big um, for the city and everything like that. So, I don't know, I just remember – I can't even remember the score, but I just remember, you know, they had, there was like seven guys kind of all in Freddie's lane and all in Freddie's eyes. So um, I remember it was kind of me and Heine right beside each other acting as if we were goalies. And I think, uh, I can't remember who it was, but someone was going down the wall and passing it kind of pops high. And like, it was crazy because you think about it and watch it over, every single guy was below the top of the surface looking back at it. Because I think there was only like, it was like 10 seconds left or something like that. And every single person was below the circles. And I remember it popped up the pass neck and Heidi was kind of taking the guy to go down the wall. So I tried to just get in lane. And obviously the first one hit me in the leg. And then I remember it popped right back to him and I was already down there. And I don't know, I kind of just went, I just blacked out, I guess, and just kind of sprawled my arms out. And I don't know where it hit me. I think it hit me kind of on the stick or hand or something. But honestly, I got lucky because I could have definitely did something that would would have taken some teeth and broken the jaw or something if it got me in a worse spot. But yeah, I just, I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of in the moment realizing, I think if it got through, I'm sure someone else would have blocked on our team or would have hit someone or it would have went in. And, you know, I just remember kind of just having to man up and try and block it, I guess. It was incredible. And uh, like Connor McDavid was saying about his older brother, giving him a little bit of courage. And you played a lot of your hockey around uh, Connor, of course, up in the Vaughn area. Uh, your brother, Chris, I'm sure has an influence on your bravery because it's, it's apparent. Okay, questions. Uh, Natalie, from Twitter and Instagram, you pick a number between one and four. Two. Two. The question is uh, from Leah Beth 2007 on Instagram. What's your favorite place to play on the road? Oh, that's tough like i think anywhere in canada really i think we get the best crowds um and obviously like the bigger the crowd the more fun it's split to play in front of so i think um yeah like this year world championships were supposed to be in halifax which i'm sure would have been amazing to be in front of that home crowd and luckily we get to go um next year to halifax and have that crowd come out and watch us and cheer us on um but yeah there's nothing like the home crowd how about you mitch um yeah that's a good question uh i mean i always uh find buffalo games a lot of fun just because of the atmosphere fan wise and the battles kind of back and forth between the two fan bases um but i mean you can never live down the staple center or msg both those two spots are i mean when you first get into those ranks and kind of look around and see everything it's uh it's eye-opening and those ranks are both known for for what they've hosted and what they've had in it. So those two rings are awesome to be a part of too. It's kind of cool. You both were in St. Louis this year for the All-Star Weekend, and it couldn't be more different, I would think. Because uh, for you, Mitchell, it's a three-on-three, -three and it's, it's a little bit of an unselfish game you're playing. Everybody's showboating and showcasing, I should say. Whereas for you, Natalie, oh, my God, you know, the women are playing on behalf of the future of your sport. Uh, it was thrilling. So you first, Natalie. What do you recall about the St. Louis experience? Oh boy. I mean, it was an amazing uh, weekend. I mean, just to be there and to be invited to go, um, but then to also have our own event. I mean, the three on three in, in the all-star weekend now. I mean, it, I was nervous. I was like, man, I've played in the Olympics. Like I've played in world championships. Like why am I nervous for this? But it's really because we were playing for something, you know, bigger than just our team or our sport it was, or our team or us. It was really for the sport of women's hockey and for the future. And, to show that there is a future for women's hockey and people are bought in, people want to see it. Um, and I think, you know, we, we gave her and <laughs> um, I think we put on a good show and, and everyone seemed to love it. So hopefully we, you know, can keep that momentum going even with, with world championships um, being canceled. Hopefully we can kind of keep that momentum going through to next season um, and keep building the women's game. And of course, Mitch, the fans demanded you be there. So what's your recollection of All-Star? Yeah, no, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, it was my first one going and uh, got to have my family with me. And, and it's a special moment. Obviously, growing up as a kid, you always dream of being in one of those all-star games and being on the ice with some of those guys that you, you get to skate with. So um, it was eye-opening. It was really cool for me. It was cool to be a part of everything. And um, City State most did a great job. And the Blues did a great job of hosting it. And, um, 
just to speak on the women's hockey court, that the game, I mean, I remember every single guy in the room sitting and watching TV and watching the girls play. And they, they wanted us not to go on the bench to try and disturb or get the girls off their game. So that, I remember guys trying to sneak out and like kind of see from bench view, but we weren't really allowed. But, um, you know, the girls game was definitely great as well to watch. It was, a lot of, it was, it was great. It was a lot of fun to watch. And, um, you know, they brought some good entertainment for us. And, um, you know, I just, to speak on Natalie's part, hopefully the, you know, the game does get the women's hockey back up and going and everyone can realize that, uh, you know, the girls should be able to have their own league and have their own teams. And I think that's something that uh, hopefully one day we can support and get that thing going. Natalie, I know how much you respect watching Mitch play the game. And uh, you did that uh, need for speed thing, right? With Austin Matthews and Laura Stacey was incredible. So you can talk about that if you want. But just again, to uh, think about Mitch's game and what it is for you as a hockey player to appreciate what he, and how close are you to? Like, do you, do you ever get to skate together outside? It seems like I see you a lot on the ice, but how close are, are you as friends? I don't know if we've ever skated together other than the, the need for speed um, and the, uh, that whole thing. But I mean, I think, you know, you watch Mitch and he's kind of um, maybe almost the opposite of me. Like he's such a playmaker. And I always say like when he plays, it almost looks like you can see the ice from the top, the top view and see all the lanes. Cause some of the passes he makes are just crazy. Um, but then you also see like, I mean, that goal he scored at the pass from Austin Matthews through his legs, backhand. I'm like, that was just unreal. So, I mean, he can skate and turn on a dime. Um, he's got that quick foot speed, which I wish I had. <laughs> um, but it's, he's just a, a fun player to watch. So, I mean, hopefully one day we'll get to skate together or train together. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I could go through a million highlights, but we'll, we'll go to, uh, I think 2016 is a really big year for you, Mitch. Obviously, you win the Memorial Cup in an amazing performance by your London Knights. And then you're walking down to the ice in Toronto, game two. So Matthews has scored four at Ottawa, and you were great in that game, your first now you get your first goal, uh, which kind of connects to St. Louis. Don't forget the Tyler Bozak, too. Uh, tell, me, tell me about walking uh, behind Austin to the ice in Toronto for your first home game, what you felt. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember kind of walking down. We, we went uh, kind of through all these back, I don't know how you call them, back kind of lanes through the ACC to get to, uh, like a diff, I think it was like the Zamboni entrance in the far corner. So I remember we had to, like, walk through a bunch of things to get to it. I remember kind of just walking the whole time talking to Austin, you know, we both had the jitters. Uh, I remember I had a lot of family and friends in the building that night and, you know, it was just really exciting. And I remember kind of through this stuff on the ice, they all kind of, the jitters and butterflies all went away. And um, I was very, very fortunate to play with Bozy and Dave Yer my first year. And, um, you know, those two guys really took me under their wing and helped me out a lot with uh, calm my, calming me down and just, I think realizing that uh, it's just, you know, playing hockey again and both those two were a big part of that first goal and, you know, big part of that first year that I had really too. I'm going to interview Mark McMorris on Monday, who's a dear friend of Tyler Bozak's. Uh, he's an amazing guy, that Bozak. So, you know, I'll take you to 2014, Natalie. Uh, the opening face-off, the Sochi Olympic Games, it's Haley Wickenheiser to take the draw. Left winger is Megan Agosta. And do you know who the right winger was to start the game? Was it me? Because those were my lineies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was you. Uh, and, and you had a you had a great. You almost won it. Like so, Brianne Jenner, uh, your dear friend Megan Mickelson made the bank pass to send Brianne on the way to score that goal and got mm -hmm. you to within one. Right, unbelievable play. And then you, uh, two minutes to go. Remember the rush you had? You almost scored to tie it. You eventually do, but you remember all that stuff. That tell me about that game and that rush. I mean, the game was crazy. Obviously. Our whole year was kind of a whirlwind. Um, you know, we had our coach step down, had a new coach come in. We had so many injuries. We were really losing a lot of the games throughout the year. Like we were on, a, I think, a four-game losing streak to the Americans going into the uh, into that Olympics. So we had really overcome a lot of adversity. But I think with everything that we'd overcome, we always knew we had it in us. Like there was games where we came back against the U.S. Um, earlier on. So in that game, yeah, obviously um, we were down. But then that goal that Jenner got, um, a bit of a lucky bounce off Bellamy, but I think it just gave us that little bit, um, you know, to, to keep us going. And then the puck hitting the post, um, I think that was really almost like a, a turning point in the game. And we just turned it on and um, who tied it up. Uh, I remember going into the locker room in between and we're like, okay, hey, let's just finish this off. Like we have the momentum now, like we have them on their heels, like almost as if when they got up, they just kind of sat back a bit. and. Um, uh, yeah, then we got obviously a, a power play 
uh, four on three and um, finished it off. And I mean, I'll never forget that. It was really the best day of my life so far. And um, getting that gold medal and looking around at the girls and just knowing everything that we'd overcome, it was, I mean, so much excitement, but also so much relief because there's so much pressure in Canada. I mean, the girls have won so many gold medals before us and, um, you know, we didn't want to disappoint and knowing that all of our hard work was, was worth it in that moment. Um, it, it felt amazing. I wish we had the rights to show Olympic, more Olympic stuff. We don't, uh, but it's, it's out there in the, you know, internet world. Okay. A couple one more question from, uh, Twitter or Instagram. This is, uh, Soria underscore 16 on Instagram asks, what is your go-to pregame song? It's Justin Bieber. Yummy, I think, isn't it, Mitch? Or what is it? <laughs> um, I always, actually, the one I always listen to uh, walking into the rink, it's, uh, it's a Halsey remix of a song. Um, I can find it. I, I can't remember right now because I haven't listened to it in about two months. Yeah. Um, well, you look for it, and what, Natalie will find her, tell us hers while you do that. Yeah, yeah, you do that. I'll find it. Oh boy. Um, I think, so I'm more like anything I can sing along to really. So it doesn't really matter as long as I can sing along. But one of the songs, like when I'm kind of feeling like I just need to like get really pumped up, I listen to Unstoppable by Kat DeLuna. Hmm. Um, it's kind of a, a really old song. I'm pretty sure not like really old, but probably yeah, like at her. least yeah. 10 years old, but it has some great lyrics that get y'all pumped up. That's good. Did you find it, Mitch? I did, yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's an old song. It's it's called Hurricane with the Halsey remix. I don't know. I it just I've listened to it for like three years straight now. Every time I've kind of been walking into the rink, I, I know it off by heart now. But it's just a song that uh, I always listen to walking in, and it just gave me a kind of good vibe. And it's kind of got the singing part and the techno part and everything kind of mixed in together well. So it's something that I just listened to for the last couple of years walking in. Uh, a couple of last things. Lindsey Hoffert, that name mean anything to you, Mitch? Yeah, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> he's a, I refereed uh, Lindsey for years, and we, I just saw him at the CJHL Top Prospects, and he said, no, Ron, you always give me a hard time for my line changes yelling at you, which he did. He used to yell at me all the time about not conducting proper line changes, uh, but I loved him dearly, and he said, I, we liked you refing, but tell me about Lindsey Hoffert, what he's meant to your life. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, I've had – couple coaches I've been very fortunate to keep a really close relationship through this whole hockey career of mine and Lindsay's definitely one of them and um, I've known him since I think I was eight or nine with pro hockey or maybe even younger and um, you know he's meant a lot to us he's helped us out a lot with hockey tournaments and playing with pro hockey and taking us to some amazing places in Europe so um, he's meant a lot to our family as well and um, you know we still talk to him a lot and obviously he was the one that kind of got me drafted in London and we got the hunters I think the take me I mean at the time I think I was like 5'5 five, five, 125 pounds going to the OHL so I remember kind of walking in and people looking at me thinking that uh, I was a crazy pick and um you know I remember Lindsay kind of just calling me just saying that uh, they're going to take me and you know they got a lot of belief in me and they didn't know I can do great there so um that was one of the great stories of him and then another one obviously in Toronto when he went there with Mark and both of them kind of decided that uh, they wanted me and I think it was kind of a little bit of a battle throughout the draft and who they're going to take and ended up being me so uh, he's been there for a lot of my uh, my great memories and he meant a lot to our family. How about you uh, Natalie same question I mean you were a great all sport athlete tell us uh, about uh, school being a four-time high school athlete of the year what you played and who believed in you that allowed you to believe in yourself. Oh boy um, I really played every sport that I was allowed to play like growing up I played um, competitive hockey and soccer outside of school but then when I got to school I was on the swim team on the badminton team on the cross country team um, on the soccer team on the hockey team so I really did everything that I was allowed to play um, I was always busy on the go but uh, I think it was really my parents uh, who encouraged me to do anything that I wanted to do and um, I was also in band and uh, you know, I, I just, I really loved those extracurriculars and, and um, learning new things, I guess. So it was really my parents that were the ones who made sure I got to everything too. So um, I have them to thank. And my three brothers, I always got to compete against them and play against them. So I think that they probably made me into an athlete too, um, always with that competitive spirit against them and trying to keep up. What did you play in the band? The clarinet. 
Okay. <laughs> I got a saxophone and song lyric coming up at the end. Mitch, last question is to you for Bonnie and Paul. Uh, Bonnie's been really great for us at Rogers Hometown Hockey, helping out with some of the stuff that we've been doing there. So I uh, love dearly their passion and support of your career in hockey itself. Uh, washing your hands. Isn't it ironic that here we're being asked to wash our hands endlessly during COVID-19. And when you scored that goal and dad looks around and there's no Bonnie, so let's finish on a washing your hands story for COVID-19. Yeah, no, that's still one of the all time stories that gets told quite a bit. And, um, you know, something that I'm sure that will never get lived down. And still one of those funny stories of after the game, I, obviously at the time, I didn't know that she was an NFC. So uh, I think I just realized, I think I, after I scored, I think I thought and realized, you know, how cool it is that I just scored the goal, my first NHL goal in Toronto, where I grew up playing with a bunch of family and friends. And, the two people that supported me for my whole life and, and sacrificed a lot of their time for it. And, and then after the game, I saw them. And the <laughs> first thing my mom looks at me and she goes, I didn't see it. And I was like, what are you talking about? What did you see? And she's like, oh, I didn't see your goal. I was in the bathroom. And uh, of course, like Twitter's blowing up, Instagram's blowing up. And my dad kind of just sitting there like looking around being like, what the hell is she, I think. So uh, it's still a story that gets told quite a bit. And it's, it's, uh, you know, it's hilarious. And, um, something that, that I don't think she'll live down, something that we can always kind of joke around with her about. She was like you. She was ahead of her time, washing her hands. So, so thanks, uh, Mitch. Thanks, Natalie. Fantastic. Can't wait to see you back on the ice. Thanks Thank so much you. for having us. Or on the air, Matt, in your case. <laughs> What a joy to enjoy, Mitch and Natalie. If you have questions for future guests, don't forget it's the hashtag in conversation. As always, we're Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific. We close with a song lyric, and today it's my favorite song of all time, Baker Street, Jerry Rafferty. And the song lyric I've chosen is for all our healthcare professionals, first line responders who are doing a great job that's almost beyond human limits. You used to think that it was so easy. You used to say that it was so easy, but you're trying. You're trying now. Yes, you are. And are we ever grateful?